Area models are one of those bits of, of mathematical thinking and mathematical learning that can frustrate folks a lot who haven't seen it before or haven't seen it in a very long time. Um, it's one of those times where we seem to take a simple process like multiplication and make it more complicated by breaking it into its constituent parts. Um, and while that is what we do, um, there is method to our madness, I promise. So let's go ahead and start with a simple multiplication problem like 27 times 35. Okay, maybe not so simple, but your average person who's my age or older will probably say, oh, well, no problem. Uh, seven times five is 35. So we're gonna put the five there. We're gonna carry the three, whatever that means. Uh, and then we will do five times two is 10, uh, plus three is uh, 11, 12, 13. So we're gonna put 13 down here. Uh, then again, for no reason that I was ever taught, we're gonna put a zero here. And uh, we'll continue the process again. That no longer counts. We're gonna say seven times three is 21. We're gonna put the one down here and the two up here. Three times two is six, plus two is eight. Add these up and we get 945 as our answer. Okay, fairly straightforward. This is how I was taught primarily when I was in elementary school. And it works, as you can see. We have used this very technique quite a lot um, here on this channel. So the first thing I wanna do before we even start talking about area models is remind folks that we're not getting rid of the quote unquote old ways of doing things. We are just clarifying them and why they work and providing alternatives such as this. Um, and in so doing, we're making connections that are really important, okay? We can look at the product 27 times 35 as the area of this rectangle. As hopefully everyone remembers, the area of a rectangle, I'm gonna put a little rectangle here to show that that's what I mean, is the length times the width. Now, which one of these dimensions is the length and which is the width? I don't know, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna say for the purposes of this video that that's the length and that's the width, okay? I will try to be consistent with that, but remember these words are more or less interchangeable. So if I find the product, uh, or if I find the area of this rectangle, then I find the product of these two numbers, fine. But let's say I wanna take this big problem and break it up into smaller, more manageable chunks. One way I can do that, and one way I do do this, like when I'm doing multiplication in my head, is I'll take that 35 and I'll break it up into 30 and five. Okay, I hope that makes sense. 35 is 30 and five, 30 plus five. And by doing this, we can take our multiplication and split it into two smaller chunks. Now we've got 27 times 30 here, and we've got 27 times five here. Still not super easy. I don't know that I could do 27 times five like in my head without doing the same carry the two thing that we did earlier. But fortunately for us, we can divide these two numbers another way as well. We can say that 27 is 20 and seven. Again, I hope this makes sense. All we've done is we've taken 35 and broken it into 30 plus five. We've taken 27 and broken it down into 20 plus seven. And now we've only really got single digit multiplication happening here and finding the area of each four of these rectangles now should be fairly simple. So 200, 20 times 30, well, two times three is six and then there are two zeros to carry along. See my previous videos on multiplication as to why that works the way it does. Uh, 20 times five, well, two times five is 10. And again, there's an extra zero coming along. Down here, seven times three is 21 with an extra zero. And then seven times five is 35. And I think you'll see that if we total up all four of these areas, 600 plus 100 plus 210 plus 35, we get the same 945, obviously it's the, still the same answer, right? The fact that we broke it up into four sort of quadrants and then put them back together doesn't change the fact that we're still multiplying 35 times 27. Now, why do I consider this to be a useful and necessary tool? 
Well, it's a few reasons. One, I think it's really important to connect the idea of multiplication and area as early as possible and as often as possible. All area is a multiplication of two dimensions, some kind of length and some kind of width. And then sort of adjusting that formula depending on the shape you've got. Another thing is that much later, we're going to end up using this same pattern to multiply and divide polynomials, um, like in high school, and knowing this kind of pattern will be helpful in that regard. Now, let's do one more example, except this time we only know what the width is. We're going to say the width is, I don't know, 25, which we can break into 20 plus 5. And we're going to say we don't know what the width is. I'm sorry, the length. See, I'm going to keep getting these mixed up. The length for now is up and down. The width is left and right. Let's just stick to that. I will try. So I want to know what, what is that, what is that length? Now, in order to do that, I would need to know the areas, yeah? But I don't even need to know all of the areas. Check this out. Let's say I know that this area is 200, and I know that this area is 160. I don't even know what these two areas are yet. But with just the information we've got on there, and a little bit of deduction, and some division, and some multiplication, we can figure out not only what problem this is meant to represent, but also what the solution is to that problem. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to be doing in Khan Academy in a little bit, which is why I'm doing this review. So let's look just for a moment at only this rectangle right here. Just that one, not the other three. Okay? We've got ourselves a rectangle that has a width of 20, and we don't know its length, but we do know that its area is 200. Well, since we know that length times width equals area, that is the same thing as saying that length is area divided by width. All multiplication problems and all division problems are really kind of the same, they're just organized slightly differently. So we can figure out the, the length of this by saying, oh, well, it's 200 divided by 20, which is 10. By knowing the area and the width, we were able to use division to find the length. Same deal with this bottom bit down here. We know that 160 divided by 20 is 8. So now we know that the problem that we were solving is either 18 times 25 equals, well, what does it equal? Let's find out. We still have two question marks up here that we can fill in now. Remember that with a rectangle, that height over there, that, that length, that 10, is the same all the way across the, the rectangle. So that 10 is still 10 over on this side. So this area is 10 times 5, which is 50. This bottom area is 8 times 5, which is 40. The total area is, let's see, 360... 400 and I see 450. I'm going to double check my work though. 50 and 40 is 90 plus 100 is 190 plus 60 is 250. Yes, 450 is correct. Just making sure. So we figured out without even knowing the full problem, we only had part of the diagram. We were able to determine not only that we were trying to solve 18 uh, times 25, that's a times, not a plus which equals 450, we could also instead say that we were doing 450 divided by 25 equals 18. Yeah, they both mean the same thing. Either way, we started with the width and the area and we worked backwards from there.